We're getting into the festive season, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Amen? And I got some cool little slides here just to let you know what's happening. And then this is just in Minnesota. 49 million turkeys are grown every year just in my home state. We have some of the Minnesotans here today, too. Nice to have some of my peeps here with me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody loves Thanksgiving, right? The, except the turkeys. <laughs> they don't really. There's a record sweet potato, 80 pounds. A record pumpkin actually was grown in Minnesota, 2,500 pounds. That's more than my car weighs, by the way. And there's a record turkey, 86 pounds. It's just, you know, I probably wouldn't taste very good if it was 86 pounds, I don't think. Yeah, but it raised a lot of money. Next, next slide is, uh, this is the biggest pumpkin pie that's ever been, ever been made. 20 feet wide. It weighs 3,700 pounds. I don't know how much whipped cream it would take to eat that thing, but that, that would make me sick. I think I got another one here. Yeah, because, uh, and this kind of reminded me of uh, Chick-fil-A, you know, eat more. But I think the best one probably is the next one where, you know, you got the <laughs> cats and dogs reflecting the holidays together. Just a little bit of fun for you there. But, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is a time when we reflect, don't we, on God's goodness. All the th good things he's done for our nation. Uh, because it's unique to the United States. We're the first country to ever have a day just to thank God for the good things he's done for our country. Other countries have followed that example in some cases. But uh, we thank him as a nation. We thank him as Christians. We thank him for our families. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. But we're going to stay in the book of Colossians. So if you've got a Bible, open up to Colossians 3. We're going to skip ahead a chapter or so. Chapter 3 in Colossians, verses 15 to 17. Because this, I think, uh, I'm, as I was reading it, it just, it just parks on the idea of thankfulness. And even some of the um, songs that uh, Matthew brought for us today really were, were touching that theme, and I was grateful to hear those songs. So, so while you're turning there, how has 2022 been for you as a year? Been a good year? Put your hand up if it's been a good year for you, 2022. Okay, for some of you, how about not so good of a year? Put your hand up, 2022. <laughs> How about you wish you would have skipped 2022 and maybe gone right on to the next year? I don't know, because I've been interviewing people a little, and some of the people have said, hey, my family's good, our health is good, we grew in the Lord, got involved in church a little bit, and that's good. So others, though, said, you know, it's been kind of a tough year. Uh, you know, we learned some lessons. Some people lost family members, actually. We'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later in the service. And, uh, you know, maybe the virus is still, in some ways, holding people's health or their finances. They're still trying to catch up after that. Other people, you know, the, their, their crop disappointed them or the, you know, their stocks tanked or something, you know, and they're trying to make ends meet and they're not meeting very well. And maybe you've had a month like that or, or a year like that, but uh, don't we tend to size up the year and try to line it up with the pluses and the minuses and say, well, it was a good year because of this, but it was a bad year maybe because of that. But Christians have a different perspective, don't we? We look to God for his sustaining in our lives and for his hand and for his blessings. I love uh, Psalm 145, 16. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. That's our God. And often uh, if I'm praying and I don't get it, or I'm missing something or I'm in trouble, my prayer is just into thy hands. Into thy hands. <laughs> into thy hands. This situation, that relationship, that I can't handle it alone. And God is there with us if we put it in his hands. And you know, the pilgrims did that too. And that's part of the history of Thanksgiving, isn't it? They endured a lot. And you should be thankful that you weren't with the pilgrims because they came across in a terrible, terrible journey and they had to sort of scrunch together. There were actually two ships that came and one of them broke down or came apart or something, if I remember my history right. They had to all pile onto one of those ships, over 100 people, onto the Mayflower. <laughs> and we went and saw it. Carol took the tour of it back in, I think it was in Rhode Island or Massachusetts. And it was a small thing to have 100 people and I was amazed at how small it was. And so, you know, they, uh, we'll talk about the pilgrims a little bit later in the message, but they were thankful to God when it was all said and done. And that impressed me. 
And it actually began to form the foundation of our, of our founding fathers. But look, as you look in Colossians 3, verses 15 to 17, I think the idea of gratitude and thanks, it comes up in all three verses. You see the word thankful. And so it fits perfect for Thanksgiving. And I want to look today at Thanksgiving in your mind and your emotions and your will. And we're going to see that in each of these verses. So if you've got a program and you're, you're following along with us, you can um, look at the first, uh, the first one today, which is th being thankful in our minds. Being thankful in our minds. Now, there's actually a ton of verses in the Bible that talk about thanksgiving and gratitude. You've heard many of those. But let's read verse 15 to start with today. And I'm using a, an older Bible that I used to preach with. It's the NLT, New Living Translation. I think it captures the idea in these three verses in Greek as it's translated even better than the NIV. But let me read verse 15. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. The word rule there is brought to A2 in Greek, and it's the only place that it's used in the New Testament. And it means to arbitrate. It means to decide. It means every decision that you make in your life, you're going to go, hmm, I choose to be thankful in this. And then the next thing, you go, hmm, I could make a choice, but I'm choosing to be thankful in that thing. And so you're debating in your mind, and you're choosing. Like Paul says, let this mind be in you, which is also um, in Christ Jesus. I also like the, the New Century version here, which says, let the peace that Christ gives you control your thinking. Because in verse 15, I think we see a reference here to your thinking, as Paul's related to, you know, to our minds. So, you know, as we contemplate, we think about how good God has been to it. I mean, just think about it for a minute. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to be a sacrifice for our sins. He forgives us of our sins. He equips us to do the things he wants us to do. He gives us a mission in our lives. He blesses us with people around us that love us. God does all that for us. And then he makes a place for us in heaven. I mean, there's no one that can give you the contentment and the connection to God that the Lord Jesus Christ can. Amen? And this is what Ben was talking about last week when he was talking about the, the peace of Christ and the Prince of Peace and how desperately we need that peace. And we, can, and we search everywhere else, but we can really only get it in fulfillment from Christ. He's the provider. He is, you know, the, the, uh, the Prince of Peace. Now, we've all got problems, don't we? <laughs> I got problems, you got problems. In fact, I like to say that people are all either going into a problem, or next slide, or they're in the middle of a problem, or next slide, or they're coming out of a problem. But we all got problems, right? In fact, I knew, meet new people, they come in the door and I never seen them before. Hey, how you doing? My name is Mark. And I'm thinking, what's your problem? <laughs> because everybody has got problems, right? So which one are you? Right now, are you going into a problem in your life? Are you in the middle of something and you need to trust God? Or are you coming out and you're grateful and you see what God did? But come on, we can all relate to that, right? And so often God uses problems to draw us to himself. But we've all got them. And Paul is saying here that we can have the peace of God in the middle of these struggles. So Paul is saying, choose to let the peace of Christ rule. Focus on a person. Choose to be thankful. That's why he says, let the peace of Christ rule. That means you can either choose, listen, you can either choose to let the peace of Christ rule or not let it rule. Which is it going to be? We're going to see the word let again later in the text. And it, it reminds us that we have to make this choice. The peace is there in Christ. And we can have it ruling in our mind and in our heart if we engage it. So do you think thankfully all the time and focus your mind on gratitude? The scripture tells us that we should. That's why we need these verses because we, we tend to slip away from gratitude. And we get selfish, we get scared, we get worried. And we need these verses. So we're going to read a verse together. And I put it in your outline. Come on. It starts out, tell God. It's underlined. 
Now you all look well dressed and you look awake. I think you can go with me. Ready? Here we go. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He's done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. And the peace of Christ will be with you. I'm sorry, the God of peace will be with you. If you have a pencil there, I think you should circle that phrase, as you live in Christ. Because our peace is in Him. We don't have it in ourselves. We can't manufacture that kind of peace. And the secret of the Christian life is being in Christ. That's where our strength and our power comes from. Now that all sounds great, doesn't it? But God's going to test that. And it's not easy to do. Actually, I got a, a picture up here, I think, of um, Robinson Crusoe. And uh, I was watching an old school movie a while back on my computer, and it was a 1954 production of Robinson Crusoe, British production, but it, it's pretty good. In fact, you can download it probably on Netflix or something. But uh, it's based actually on a true story. And uh, it's, it's about a shipwreck with a guy who was a lone survivor, and he was marooned on the side that the ship was wrecked, everybody else died, and he alone was there. And he, he was able to salvage a cat and a dog and a bunch of junk from the ship, actually stuff that we found, he found useful. And then the rest of the ship parts went down, and he was there. And he was there on this island for 28 years. And like I said, it's based on a true story. The actual sailor's name was uh, Alexander Solkirk. He was a Scottish sailor. And in the movie, Caruso is expressing how he feels. And he's saying, look, I, I, I'm a captive here, and I'm stuck on this island because I'm a sinner. I must have done something wrong, and God's punishing me by putting me here. But then he, he read a verse from the Bible because among all the things on the ship, every ship had a, had a ship's Bible. And so he had the Bible with him, and he took it ashore along with some of the other things. And he happened to be reading, and here's the verse that he read. It's from the Psalms, and it says, Come to me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. He read that verse. It completely changed his attitude. He closed the Bible, and he got up, and he began to see the island a whole new way. It, it, just, it transformed his thinking. Now he started to think of the island as his home. And he thought, hey, this is an, an ugly thing, but God has put me here. This is not a place of misery now. This can be a, a beautiful... And he began to notice how beautiful the island was. And it was like 20 miles across, and it had all the, you know, food and vegetables and things so he could live all that time. But as time went on, he built other... Maybe you've seen the movie. He built other little huts and fortresses and things. And he had challenges along the way. We don't need to get into all that. But every year when the year came, he celebrated his anniversary because he was glad to be there. And his attitude completely changed. And God had de delivered him, not from the island, but he delivered him from his selfishness. And so now he had an attitude of gratitude. And that's a cliche that we hear because it rhymes. But he really had that. 28 years. Can you imagine being on an island that long? And so in the end, when he was rescued, he came back to me and said, you know, this, this was all a test from God. And he compared his life to Job because Job was tested and he was grateful that God was with him in and through the trial. So, you know, it, that movie just struck me and I thought that fits perfect for Thanksgiving because, it, you know, it's, a, it, it's an old school movie, but it reminds us of what, of what Paul said about have this mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. And because we're in Christ, we have his mind within us. And so when your peace gets tested, when your peace gets threatened, I'm not saying, you know, you're going to be stuck on a deserted island somewhere, you know, far away. But the island can be in your mind, right, where you're trapped somewhere. And you feel like it's punishment from God. And you feel like you don't deserve whatever it is he's He's put you in or, or he's putting you through. And that's when we hit the pause button. We go to the scripture. Be still and know that I am God. 
and we engage our faith in Christ. And he's what, helps, he's what helps us to face these things. Because you know the old saying is, you are what you think. And Jesus even said, as a man thinks, so is he. And so, you know, the, he also said, the truth will set you free. And then you'll be free indeed in Christ. And we get free from him by holding on to his teaching. John 8, 31 and 32. Are you holding on to his teaching? If you are and if you do, you have a chance that the truth will set you free. And so what's, what are we being set free from? Jesus is freeing our minds so that we can be grateful. And I'm saying this so that whatever it is at Thanksgiving this year, you can go, oh, I guess I should be thankful, even though I have all this junk going on around me, things that you can't control. Amen? But you know, being thankful in your mind is not enough. And that's why Paul went on. True thanksgiving is more than just thankful thoughts. Let's go to point two, which is this in verse 16. Your emotions are also involved. Take a pencil and write this down. Your emotions are also involved in this. And so see, gratitude needs to be expressed emotionally. Now let me read verse 16 in the text. Colossians 3, verse 16. Remember, Paul has said in verse 15, always be thankful. So verse 16, again, there's the word let. Let, that means you can choose to let or not let. Let the message about Christ, your version may say the word of Christ, in all its richness, fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. You know, let the word of God dwell in you richly, it says in the NIV. And then sing to God. We just did that as Matthew led us. These great songs that set the stage for us to be more thankful for him. I think I also put a, uni, a, a, a verse there that we can say in unison. It's on the back of your outline at the top. It starts out, shout with joy. Let's read together. Here we go. Shout with joy to the Lord, O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. You know, when we read Scripture together, aloud like that, it doesn't just engage us in what's going on around us. It reminds us, I really believe this. I'm not just saying this. I'm not just hearing it from someone talking up there. I believe this. And then this reinforces your faith. And so we don't just think it with our minds, we also feel it in our hearts. By the way, I put that thing above there, E plus R equals outcome. I left it out because I didn't really have time to go into it, but if you want to fill the blank, it's this. Event plus reaction equals outcome. So if something happens, boom, you react. How are you going to react? Positively? Or a negative. That's going to affect the outcome. You get pulled over because you're speeding. You don't know how fast you're going. The cop comes up. Your reaction to the cop might determine the outcome. <laughs> and I can give you 100 examples. We're not going to take the time to go into that. It's just to say that your emotions are part of who you are. And God loves to hear us react and say, I love you, God, and I want to connect with you, even though things aren't going great. And listen, your Thanksgiving is not going to be perfect. So you need to be ready for that. Now let's watch a little video. This is Peanuts at Thanksgiving time. Check it out. What's this? A piece of toast? A pretzel stick? Popcorn? What blockhead cooked all this? What kind of a Thanksgiving dinner is this? Where's the turkey, Chuck? 
Don't you know anything about Thanksgiving dinners? Where's the mashed potatoes? Where's the cranberry sauce? Where's the pumpkin pie? You were kind of rough on Charlie Brown, weren't you, sir? Rough? Look at this. Is this what you call a Thanksgiving Day dinner? Did we come across town for this? We we're supposed to be served a real Thanksgiving dinner. Now, wait a minute, sir. Did he invite you here to dinner? Or did you invite yourself and us too? Gee, I never thought of it like that. Do you think I hurt old Chuck's feelings? I bet I hurt his feelings, huh? Golly, why can't I act right outside of a baseball game? Marcy, maybe you can go to old Chuck and patch things up for me. Maybe you can tell him how I really feel. Tell him that I didn't mean it the way it sounded. Marcy, you can do it. You go see him and tell him that I really like him and that the dinner is okay with me. Well, I don't know, but I'll try. I think maybe you should go to Chuck and tell him yourself. No, Marcy, I'll just ruin everything. You know I'm too brusque and rough. You go and speak for me. Well, okay. This is not unlike another famous Thanksgiving episode. Do you remember the story of John Alden and Priscilla Mullins and Captain Miles Standish? This isn't like that one at all. Don't feel bad, Chuck. Peppermint Patty didn't mean all those things she said. Actually, she really likes you. I don't feel bad for myself. I just feel bad because I ruined everyone's Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving is more than eating, Chuck. You heard what Linus was saying out there. Those early pilgrims were thankful for what had happened to them. And we should be thankful too. We should just be thankful for being together. I think that's what they mean by Thanksgiving, Charlie Brown. Psst, come here. See you later, Charles. Charles? It's all yours, Priscilla. Priscilla? Priscilla? Apologies accepted, Chuck, old boy. Sure. There's enough problems in the world already, Chuck, without these stupid misunderstandings. Let's not play lover's game. Yeah. <laughs> so it took three minutes to use there. Only to say that you might be tempted to grumble when Thanksgiving comes. And there might be something that's not right between you and another person. Don't send somebody else to go fix it. You need to do that. And your emotions might get out of hand. It happens to us, doesn't it? You know, and that, that's the illustration, I think, in the, in the little thing there. And, it, you know, when Thanksgiving comes, maybe you're getting together with a lot of family. It might be the food's not right or the mood's not right or the people come late, you have expectations. I mean, Peppermint Patty there, the girl, she had expectations. And then she reacted to those, but then she recovered from that. And sometimes in the holidays, our expectations get way high and our emotions are way out there. That's why Paul's talking about our heart here, keeping it in line, letting Christ rule in our heart. Because see, your mind and your emotions and your will should be equal, an equal sized balloon for your emotions and your mind and your heart. Uh, I mean, your will. But what happens when we get emotionally charged up? The emotions get way out of control. And now you've got to fight people throwing turkey and running out of the house. And you don't want that. I'm trying to set you up for whatever you have for Thanksgiving or just for life. Because this is important. Instead of abounding in Thanksgiving, sometimes we abound in, in grumbling. <laughs> and Paul says, don't go there. Again, verse 16 let the word of Christ, the message of Christ, and all its riches fill your lives. And then he goes on to say, sing and be happy and reflect that in your gratitude. Now, it's not easy to do this, is it? It's not easy to keep people emotionally with you. I'm thinking about Moses. Actually, I got a picture here of Moses. He handled 600,000 people, the book of Numbers tells us, and that was just the men. So it could have been over a million people. This is a picture just for you to get a, a little bit of a scope of 
500,000 people in Moscow doing a anti-communist rally in 1991. That is a lot of people. Moses had even more people than that to manage. He was one guy and he had no PA system. Right? And they were starting to grumble against him. They were not thankful, even though God had delivered them, you know, from the hands of the Egyptians and everything. And here he was. He took this job. He was 80 years old when he took this job. If you're 80 here, you can relate to how hard that must have been. Let me read a couple of verses to you from Numbers chapter 20. You don't have to turn to it, but... There was no water for the people to drink. They rebelled against Moses. The people blamed Moses, said, If only we had died in the past. Why have you brought the congregation out to this wilderness to die? Why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here to this terrible place? And then as the chapter goes on, they come to the king of Edom. He says, Stay out of my land or I'm going to meet you with an army. And because Edom refused to allow Israel to pass through the country, Israel was forced to turn around. So he had to turn a half a million people around and go the other direction. And then his sister died, Miriam. And then his brother died, Aaron, all in the same chapter. Now you've had hard times. But these were the people that helped him do the leading and sort of, you know, run the show. I don't know if you've ever had to turn 600,000 angry people around to go in a different direction. But I love verse 27 where it says, And Moses did what the Lord commanded. He kept leading. He kept trusting God. He didn't quit. And even though maybe that wasn't that Thanksgiving time, it's a reminder to us that we have to trust God. He didn't even have the Bible to turn to. In fact, his journal later became the Bible. <laughs> he was writing Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy as a record of what happened back then. And it became the Pentateuch, the first part of the Bible. So some of you, I don't know what kind of emotional strain you're under now or you're going to face there in, in Thanksgiving or in this coming holiday season, but verse 16 says, face it with gratitude and let the Lord rule in your heart. Greek word there with gratitude is ente karati, which is uh, charis is where we get our word grace, charisma, graceful, and it's saying ente means in, and so it's in Christ. Your your ability to be thankful is, comes from the resources of Christ in you. And that's something we need to grasp as we look into the, this holiday season for ourselves. So, so are you grateful right now? I don't know. I think about the kid who was struggling, you know, with gratitude. He didn't understand it yet, and he gets a gift. And he doesn't show any appreciation. His parents are kind of sad because I guess, they, I guess he hasn't learned yet how to be grateful. So at Thanksgiving, don't just assume that the people around you know that you're grateful for them. Say those things. Don't just think that you're grateful to God. Say those things. I don't know how many of you came to the Buzz Austerly service yesterday. Am I saying that right? The Austerly or Osterly? Yeah. Anyway, I was really touched by the tribute from his family members and others. about He must have been a very special person. I didn't get to know him. But it seems like the things they said about him and his family and his career and his influence at the church and with, with the business world and sports and everything, pretty amazing guy. But to see that family had months to say how much they loved Buzz and how they cared about him because he was gradually getting away. But sometimes life is not like that. And an and, and, and can come suddenly for a person. So don't assume that they know how you feel about them. Tell them that you're grateful that they're in your life. Tell them that you love them. I love you to my wife or to my daughter or to my brother. I, I thank God that you're in my life. Or, or sometimes you're God's voice to me when you speak. Or, 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 I, or, or I praise God for you in, in my life. Or maybe that person sitting next to you right now that you can remember to say those things to. But whatever emotions you're feeling, you know, I love the words again. I, I only was able to write down some of them, but Matthew led us in that song. I said, May the mind of Christ, my Savior, dwell in me in all that I do and say. And then may the peace 
of God my Father rule in my life and everything. I mean, you sang those words with me. Were they true to you? So you really are letting him rule? If you're thankful, you know, I encourage you to come um, on Wednesday night and at least listen to the other people who are thankful too and build your gratitude if you're struggling with something. Let's finish with the final point today, and it's this. Because it's about willing to live a thankful life. We talked about the mind and the emotions. What about your will? Your will is involved in this as well. Verse 17, And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. Thanks, again, is in all three of these verses. But a thankful person, they think grateful thoughts, they express grateful feelings, but they also live it out, don't they? I love what Charles Dickens said about Thanksgiving. He says, we're mixed up in the United States. He says, instead of having one Thanksgiving day a year, we should have 364 days of Thanksgiving during the year. And then one day where everybody grumbles and yells and screams and gets it all out of their system. <laughs> and then you can go on with the rest of the days of being thankful. Isn't that great, a great theory? Doesn't mean you have to eat turkey 364 days a year. <laughs> but... See, your possessions are going to come and they're going to go. Even relationships come. Good times come and go. But Job said, shall we accept the good from the Lord and not the bad? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Last verse we'll read, and this is probably the most important, is from Habakkuk chapter 3. It starts out, even though a fig tree. Let's read. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms, and there is no grapes on the vine, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie barren, even though the flocks die in the fields, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be hopeful in the God of my salvation, the sovereign Lord of my strength. Notice twice in that verse you can circle the words, I will, I will do that, even though times are bad. These are commands that Paul gives us. These are verbs. He says, let the peace of God rule. Be thankful. He's telling us to do things. And that's what the pilgrims did because history tells us that they struggled when they got here to America. Actually, they struggled to leave England. They struggled with the scary crossing across the Atlantic. They struggled then with the cold. They struggled being sick. They struggled. Many of them died. They struggled trying to get food. They struggled with the Native Americans till they could form relationships with them, which they did. But they struggled with those things. And they lived hand to mouth, but they depended on God and they were thankful to God. But see, they didn't just say we're thankful. Then they went out and they used their will and they engaged the strength that God gave them. And they made America great. <laughs> and God used them. So let's not forget you know, that we are a great nation. Partly because of our founding fathers and, and what God's given us and resources and the melting pot and all the good things about our country. Thank God for that. Do you know how unusual that is around the world? And in history, we have so much to be thankful for. But, you know, no matter what happens, if you're in a tough place, I hope that this reminds you that as we go to Scripture and we take a few days to be grateful, that God and His grace will be special to you in these days of thanksgiving. Let's bow as we pray and prepare for communion. And uh, Ben's going to come up and lead us in that now. And Lord, as we finish today, we, we turn our hearts to the, the breaking of bread and we know what you've done for us. It's so special. And we, we thank you for the words of Paul. He did this himself. He showed gratitude. And he was willing to, to work as well as express his gratitude. Give us these qualities, Lord, in our lives. They're, they're beyond us. And, and we need your Holy Spirit to guide us into truth and to keep reminding us of what's good and what's right and what's true. Thank you <laughs> that we can be alive and say thank you for all that you've done for us. And may we live grateful lives in Christ's name. Amen.